but uh, let's let's actually start. So uh, bring your feet together in the center. Pull your head top up. Relax your shoulders. Relax your tailbone. And then breathing, just as if we want to we want to do things minimal. So as if something is lifting just the wrists, just the centers of the palms together in the center. And then relax your body against the earth. So, so using the vertical structure to balance against the gravity. Feel your weight in the feet. Grip your feet, shape your feet, and then allow them to relax. And then just as if there's one point, like a string, going all the way up from the crown chakra, even above the crown chakra, lifting. And then, like you, when you have clothing and you put it on a hanger and it hangs, allow your body to hang off of that one point so that you can rest the bottom of it against the ground. If you have a, uh, <clears throat> for people that live near the ocean, a wetsuit, especially the Pacific, a full body wetsuit, you have it on the hanger, but the feet can touch the ground. So make your body the same, stretched between heaven and earth. So feel your feet resting, and then feel your head top stretching. <clears throat> Relax the brow, open the vision, open your nostrils, half smile, connect the tongue to the upper palate. Relax your shoulders, hollow the chest. Feel a little space in the armpit so that the arms aren't completely collapsed, but there's a little bit of roundness that keeps all the joints open. <clears throat> Relax your arms. Use your center to support. Allow your lower back to both expand and open. Fold the insides of the, your hips inwards this way so that you're not, you don't have your butt out to the back, so that the insides folding down in gravity, allowing your legs to support yourself naturally, effortlessly. This is why we say forget the knees. And then expand your ankles and your feet, grip your toes. And then internally, open your nostrils and breathe. In Chinese medicine, the lungs go all the way up the throat, and, and even the nostrils are considered to be part of the lung complex, organ complex. So activate your entire lungs, from your nostrils, your nose, the sinuses in the front, the sinuses in the back are a little different. It comes down the throat <clears throat> and into the lungs. And then activating the lungs from the bottom up. So pulling your diaphragm downwards. You can expand the dantian or you can grip it. <clears throat> and then breathing, filling up like a water bottle. And then when you reach the top, just like in, when you fill a water bottle, you hear a sound. You also hear a sound in your lungs when you reach the top. And then you exhale and you fully deflate. <clears throat> and so time the breathing while you're standing. You don't have to think about anything else. I know Steve remembers TC would talk about filling the water bottle in such a way that the water goes in at the same rate that the air goes out so we can fill it effectively, efficiently. So like one solid stream of air coming in, filling just the right timing, very slow, very relaxed. And then when you reach the top, exhale. And then simultaneously while we're breathing, lift the base of the torso. Everything at the pelvic floor, pulling upwards, inwards, towards the, the geometric center of the body. <clears throat> and then relax. We're going to do the same type of breathing. By the way, this we start. I start my Tai Chi classes with this type of long breathing exercise. And it both helps you clear your mind from everything that we've been dealing with with the week. But also... You can use this as a Tai Chi principle. Pump yourself up before you go to do some activity. Whatever it is, whatever you have to do, uh, even sitting for some time, uh, at the beginning of my classes, we take this time to breathe. 
So do the inflation, do the stretch. And while you're breathing, have the intention of both inflating your structure. Imagine that all of the cells in your body can be filled with new oxygen that you're breathing in. So you're breathing with the intention to reach the extents of your body's breathing to fill all the way to the fingertips. As you breathe, when you look up, see your hands. Your hands are what allow you to implement your will on the world. So imagine the oxygen goes all the way to every cell in your fingertips. Make your breathing that expanded. You can go at your own pace. Some people, when we do this exercise, like to go very slow. You don't have to sink very deep. But make it a stretch. Stretching your body will actually expand the torso to help you breathe more. Expanding the torso, you feel opens. Imagine your body is like a big sponge. If you ever have a big sponge and you want to get it wet, fully concentrated with water, you have to hold it under the water for some time and, and once it gets wet in one area, you just start to squeeze it so that it goes, the water goes into other areas and you continue to feed it with more water. So with this Qigong, imagine that you're like a sponge and you can soak up air through your lungs. And you want to fill yourself up with oxygen. Qi. But it's a process too because we're exhaling CO2. You can use this Tai Chi technique for even little things when you have to go to the store in your car. If we take three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes to prepare for an hour long Tai Chi class, if you're only going to the store 15, 30 minutes, you can take one minute before you go out the door to do the deep breathing. Or like my teacher did TC. <clears throat> He drove a very far distance many times a week. He was driving from Riverside to Los Angeles at least three times a week. So he said he would use the drive time to do this type of breathing. But he was also a Tai Chi master, so he had his mind clear to adjust his inside and outside all the time. So when you can remember, before you do whatever activity it is that you do. Very simple, cooking something, something around the house. My teacher said, the Tai Chi form is not as important as using the Tai Chi principles around your home. Because this is where we spend our lives, especially now. <clears throat> and so moving Tai Chi principle is to prepare for the task correctly by inflating with energy. Check to make sure that you haven't lost a half smile while thinking about all that other stuff. And then when you finish another one, whatever point, bring your feet back together, bring your hands together in the center. And then recalibrate.
it's okay to readjust. It's okay to fine tune. So pull the head top back up. Clear the brow. Open the vision. Open the nostrils and sinuses. Activate the half smile. Relax your jaw. Connect the tongue to the roof of the mouth. And there's another teaching that says you should feel, <laughs> my teacher would use the term watery. He said you, you should feel watery inside your mouth, right? This is saliva. If you, if you cultivate saliva, just swallow. <clears throat> you don't ever want to spit that out. Keep the chin tucked. Relax the shoulders. Hollow the chest. Use the core to support. Unroll the back. Let everything relax. And then connect the front with the back so the insides of the hips are folding in and that allows the tailbone to sink naturally. And by the way, we talk about in this class many times having the spine to be very straight and straightened out, but we're not trying to eliminate the natural curvature that happens at the back of the neck and in the lumbar section. So even if we use a wall or some uh, straight post, when we, when we use that to make sure that our shoulder blades and hips and everything is square and flush, we still want to have this rounded area in the base of the neck and this rounded area in the base of the uh, lower back here, the lumbar. <clears throat> so when we say this back is upright or straight, uh, it's with respect to the natural curvature of the spine. Gripping the feet. And then return again to natural breathing, the same long breathing that we started with. And uh, because today is a slow day, it's an off day, we see it's just us here. Let's, let's actually, before we even move around a bit, let's do some standing. And we're going to do the basic stance. So if we make the feet at least shoulder width wide, I'm going to move around a little bit on camera because I'm wearing black so that you can see more clearly. But make your feet at least shoulder width wide. Plant your lower legs vertically into the ground and you can kind of sit back just a little bit. Relax your tailbone. And then the arms are round as if you're holding something hollow inside there. And make the connection also to your torso so that we're not puffed out against it, but that roundness continues through the back. So imagine a line that goes from the, on the inside of the palm and comes up across the center and goes out through the other hand and make that shape circular. Relax your shoulders and then relax your elbows. Push up through the back of your neck and we want to form this nice triangular A shape that sort of supports itself. So relax your tailbone and sitting back, have this imaginary round shape and even, even the wrists, so instead of having them turned out this way, allow them, yeah, to be round. So just imagine that there's a beach ball or a yoga ball or some type of uh, exercise ball, they call medicine ball something, and that you can feel it pressing against your sternum and against your bicep and your forearm. Imagine that round shape and then allow your back to also relax around that round shape. So pushing up through the center. And then, now instead of imagine, imagining a ball, I want you to imagine that you're holding water. And not a bucket of water, and not a, not a container of water, but that you are the container. So imagine that ring that goes from your middle finger, your forearm, and up this way, that that circle is filled with water. And water is very heavy, I don't know what it weighs, I don't know. 10 pounds of, uh, I'm trying to think of these gallons of fuel, fuel tank gallons, uh, how much, what's a gallon of milk weigh, right? So imagine you have gallons and gallons of water and it's pressing outwards against that circle. And so you want to relax, but you want to feel that circle expanding against the chi, the water that's expanding. And allow it to be heavy and you'll feel it go outwards. You should Feel your chest be able to relax and sink a bit with the weight of the water. And you should feel heavy, like you can plant your feet against the ground and be rooted. And the struggle then at that point with all the weight pulling down with gravity is to keep the head top. So push the head top up, but relax the shoulders to go around 
and embrace the water to, to contain it inwards. And then go back to that breathing. And you'll feel when you inhale, you can make the shape of your body more substantial. And when you exhale, feel the air go down and fill this area of the water where the chi is. So that becomes heavier. So we have a yin and yang. Gravity is pulling down weight. The, the water is trying to expand against your arms. But then the head top going up. And we're relaxed against that expansion. So keep doing the long breathing. We're lifting the base of the torso on the inhales and then letting it relax on the exhales. And the same thing with the abs. We can just add a light flex, like some light flexion in the abdominal muscles. But it's not, we're not trying to grip it. It's not Hercules. It's just simply adding some movement. And so relax your shoulders, relax your elbows, relax the wrists. Keep the same shape. Feel as though the chi that's in the center, your imaginary pool of water that's pressing out against your arms and your torso is what's keeping the shape. So you can relax your fingertips. You can relax the pads of your hands. Open the palms. You have a point on the center. Imagine like a flower, that point can bloom open and relax. So that your hands can expand. And then take your thumbs offline. Just allow them to be there. You don't have to have any tension. And then expand your wrist. Imagine like a ring that grows outwards from the center of your wrist. Imagine that that opens. And then relax your forearms. One teacher would say, it may feel like wax, hot wax dripping or like molasses dripping to the lowest point going down to your elbows, like you have some honey that's dripping off of. As you relax, the shape stays the same, the tension melts away. And have this expansion, the elbow, feel as though you can keep the same round shape, but without having to keep that, that tendon right here, doesn't have to have any tension in it. And your bicep, and the tricep, the back of the arm, but all of that relax. So as you breathe, expanding out to your fingertips, relax your shoulders, relax your chest. And then let your arms relax to the side. You can take some small steps. We're going to change. We're going to still do some standing. So if this is uh, uncomfortable. Take a break for a second. Move around. You can roll, roll your shoulders a few times. And then get back to a nice, comfortable, at least a square stance. But you can make it wider if you like. Relax your tailbone. And we're going to do the same thing, except now for that, the space that's between the fingertips, right? We're leaving a space. Uh, centimeter, inch, can, can be uh, several inches. We don't want a foot that's too far apart. But somewhere in here, we're going to have that line that connects the middle fingers and we're going to turn around that so that we have the same rounded shape. But try not to have everything up here. Try not, to, yeah, let everything be round and point your pinkies as if there's a string that comes from the ceiling and it's holding the pinkies upright. And then keep it round so we're splaying the hands and pressing them out and then the same thing with the chest, we want to feel <clears throat> and so grip the feet press the palms out and feel the same round shape that's completely relaxed like holding the water in except this time now we're going to change something that line now goes from the middle finger it goes out the palm and it goes out along the outside edge of the arm and goes through the center and comes out this way. So now instead of holding something in, I want you to imagine that there's fire and it's on the outside. Yeah, you can relax as needed, by the way. This is this 
the reason we're doing fire is because this one kind of burns a little bit, right? So if you have this nice round shape, it can be relaxed. See how low my elbows are. And then turning around that. And then the same thing, holding the shape. And imagine that you're keeping the fire on the outside at bay. And so in Chinese, they call this kan and li, which is fire and water. And so in this, we're using this as a, a yin-yang exercise. And resume the natural breathing. Resume the deep breathing that we started with. Relax your tailbone. Pull your head top up. So you can imagine a, like a post with a circle. So make your energy, the spine, and your upward moving power through your head top, like a, a tall, straight, solid post. And then the ring that goes through your back and your arms and your fingers. So, so allow your elbows to relax. We don't have to keep the, the middle fingers parallel. We can allow them to naturally it, the, the index fingers actually start to become parallel if we, yeah, so, and then try not to pinch your shoulders, relax your shoulders, right? So all of this hanging with gravity. And then when you need to, just allow your arms to go to the side. Keep the same, the good solid base, but relax your shoulders a bit. You can start in water and then turn your pinkies upwards and then resume the deep breathing. And feel the fire. Use your imagination, use your mind power to feel and how long you can keep the fire at bay. How long you can keep the fire out. So that means how much you can relax your shoulders, your shoulder blades, your elbows, the forearms, the wrists. But when it burns too much, you have to relax. We don't want to have pain. Remember, in this... In this school, TC would say, pain is one of the body's ways of saying stop. And TC spoke a lot of times in, in broken English for clarity. But that was a sentence he would say very clearly to students, especially at uh, IOC and, and Sexy Hair, because they may never get Tai Chi teaching again. So the same with our practice. We don't ever hold a horse stance for two hours long until it's creating trembling and pain. You may build up to that if you have a teacher that's teaching you a special practice, you may do that practice. But in this class, in our day-to-day -day life, pain is means that we have to make some type of adjustment to, so that we don't have pain. So if we do a deep stretch and it creates a pain, okay, we can only go so far before we reach the threshold and then ex push, 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 expand into that territory. Let's go back to standing, gripping your feet. Return to the water. Allow everything to relax. Make the center post so straight. Relax your tailbone. Sink your tailbone all the way to the ground like an anchor. So feel the energy, like you have some heavy weight hanging from your tailbone and it's connected to the space in the back. And then pull your head top up. Imagine like a periscope coming up out of a submarine so that you can push your head and that we don't have the chin is up, the periscope level to the horizon. So pushing up and then relax your shoulders, form the circle and feel the pressure of the water trying to escape the circle. Even though the hands aren't connected, it looks much better. Yeah, keep the shoulders and elbows relaxed and feel the expansion. I'm, I'm doing both of these con and lee water and, and fire exercises to, to prep for a different, for one of our warm-up exercises that we do later. Because I want you to feel this round shape in the arm. It's, <clears throat> it's critical to Tai Chi. Is the arms and the hands are connected. <clears throat> San Tong Bay, fan through back, means this is all one round shape. When we do crane, this is one connected coil, like a spring. It's a round, like a helix. So these two shapes, this round one here, when we hold this ball, or when we change it, keeping the fire out, relax your shoulders, relax your elbows, relax your wrists, and then feel the roundness. So like you're inside of a 
cylindrical tube and you want to press as much of your surface area, press your back, press your, the outside of your arms, the outside of your forearms, as much of your hands. So normally the hands are inclined to be this way, but we want to, in this particular case, like we're pressing against the inside of a cylindrical shape, a cylindrical surface, something like this. And then with this one, breathe, relax the, the whole circle, allow it to sink with gravity, Feel your tailbone connect to the earth, loop your toes. Internally, we're breathing deep. Try to relax your arms more, relax your shoulders more. Just breathing. Push your head top up. Feel the roundness go through your back, which means your chest will also feel hollow. And then, when you're ready, take a break. So now you you should actually feel instead of doing this is a this is like a, a tai chi concept for for warming up is instead of doing a lot of vigorous activity and stretching we can actually do the warm up just by standing allowing the muscles to relax in place uh, it's a it seems like a dichotomy how can we uh, stretch while we seemingly do nothing but there is a way internally to do it with the practice and so that is. Uh, using some of these types of exercises. But to balance that, that's very internal. That's a very internal practice. Uh, we would say it's very yin, uh, very hidden. And we're going to combine that with this other exercise that I really like to do for opening joints, for opening everything from the fingertips up to the torso. And, and one of the main things I want you to do is protect your neck and head. I don't want vibration going upwards. I want it in the arms here, for, uh, being constrained to the collarbone, to the center of this part of the thing. And so the exercise is the drum. And so we start breathing, we gather the energy in, and then we turn the palms flat and we're pressing downwards. But I want you to see this outward shape. We've done this in the past where we do this kind of bouncing, but I don't want your limbs to be uh, loose. I want you to have the same feeling of roundness that we have in San Palm Bay, this round shape here, pressing down. So even when you hit the limit, if you look very carefully, my arm, it has a curvature. I'm not going, I'm not locking the joints. It's not fully straight. That's incorrect. That's, in Tai Chi, we would say it's gone too far to the extreme for grand extremities. So we always want to stay round. So breathing, pull your head top up, sink your tailbone, and then drum. But keep the round shape when you drum. And you can exhale right at the moment of power. So fill up with air entirely, and then exhaling all at once, breathing in through the nose, and you can exhale through the nose as well. And so we can use this for a couple of different things. For people that like to cultivate a martial arts power, for the punch, this kind of shocking power, drumming power, right? We can use it that way. But for people trying to improve their structure, for people sitting behind a desk all day like this for seven days a week. Uh, that's what I do, right? Tai Chi is my, my evocation. My vocation is I work in, in visual effects and 3D animation. So I sit at the computer, I have effect. Uh, this is why we have to practice and stretch every day. So, but to do it, we have to do it correctly. And when we do this drumming, everything has to stay round. So you can shake off any of the tension that's in your forearm, that's in your shoulders, that's in your back, by doing this drumming. But we want to keep the vibration from going up into the head, and we also want to prevent the arms. They may reach one specific moment where they feel real straight, but we don't want to hyperextend them. So keeping the roundness, you can relax your arms, Relax your hands, relax your shoulders, and feel the vibration coming up, pectoralis in the back. So 
So this is also a Tai Chi Yin Yang. We see in, in one posture is the most static, the most stable, the most yin. It's not moving at all. And the other posture is the most active, the most yang, everything moving, right? We have this drumming type of thing. You can practice somewhere in between. And you can also, something, TC, small vibrations. Prevent your head top from moving, right? Sink your tailbone. Imagine uh, a person that used to go to the Westwood classes used to refer to it as the baby bouncer. And for any of you that have children or have been around children where they have a baby bouncer, it's like a, like a type of A-frame that has like a top and some legs. And, and in the center is like a, like a seat that has springs that connect to the frame. That's what we want to do with our Dantian, is so that that's moving around. But our feet are rooted and our head tops up and our shoulders are stable. They may move, but our structure is strong. And the center can bounce around inside that shape. So keep your head top pulled up. And this is like settling a box of, you have a, a bag of whatever your favorite food is that comes in a bag, right? Uh, and you, when you shake it, all the contents settle to the base. This helping uh, when we sleep sideways, all balled up. Uh, this type of light bouncing can put the organs back into the right place. It can help the muscles and tendon of this upper area here relax. <clears throat> Yin and yang, very, very stable. Lots of movement, lots of powerful movement. So what is Tai Chi? Tai Chi wants to be the exact mix between yin and yang. So yin is not moving. Yang is moving. So Tai Chi somewhere mix between I'm not really moving too much and I'm moving. It's a mix. How is it possible? Let's do just a little bit of Tai Chi. Uh, this class, uh, it says there's 25 minutes, but we're going to I always talk about doing a short class, and I actually want to do a short class today. So, so I want to do an exercise because I know that uh, one person that's taking the live class today, who is not Steve, says that they do not practice <coughs> Tai Chi sometimes when we do the Tai Chi form. So I want to just do the basic form back and forth a few times, grasp the sparrow's tail, and ward off. Just grasp the sparrow's tail and ward off. Because it's a way that we can practice Tai Chi and you don't have to know the form. We're just going to do two postures back to back, left and right. Very simple movement. So, pick a space where you can see the TV from the side. And <clears throat> we're just going to step shoulder width wide, bring the hands up and let them settle. And then when they're in the front, you can think of that round shape, but instead of having the, the fingers turned in, in this particular case, I leave the fingers forward. So it's still round. <clears throat> and then breathing deep, I'm going to draw a circle on the right with my right hand on top, my left hand underneath, like I'm holding a ball. And then I step forward, and I want to roll that ball forward. And then I'm going to change. I'm going to draw a complete circle with my left hand, ending on top. My right hand is going to come underneath like I'm holding a big ball. Step straight forward. This is called ward off. Now my right hand draws a circle around the ball. Left hand comes underneath. Step forward. Ward off. Left hand. You can also think of drawing an infinity sign. So the hand that's underneath, when it goes up, like drawing part of the figure eight, comes up around the circle to catch, and then turning. So draw a circle, the other side supports, and then ward off. We're gonna do a bunch more of that, but I wanna talk about if we, when we face the cam, if I face the camera and we do the same exercise, Tai Chi, <clears throat> every posture uses yin and yang as the breakdown, right? So the hands also using yin and yang. So how do we know in every posture which hand is a yin hand and yang hand? For right now, it's not important. But when you, when you uh, practice later, for grasp the sparrow's tail, this is the yang hand, it's moving. The yin hand supporting. 
ward off. This one moving, grass, the sparrow's tail. This one is supporting, and then they change. This one is yin, it's resting, while this one is active, is warding off. Uh, when we do the owl show, this one hook, this hand is moving and turning, right? It stays connected to my center, but the hand is moving. The other one is just waiting. It's waiting to change, to support. And then once this one has done its job, they change. This one is now resting, and the other one becomes very active to do hook and whip. So the same with grasp the sparrow's tail and ward off. Let's practice again, traveling in one direction. <clears throat> grasp the sparrow's tail, this hand is active, and then they change to ward off, the other one moves forward. And so now this one is active, and the other one is just waiting. It says, if, if the change happens, the other one takes over. And so it goes here. And this one continues, grasp the sparrow's tail, step forward, ward off, draw a circle, catch, Step forward, ward off, circle, catch, step, ward off. Is that direction better? Should I go this way? It doesn't matter which way we go. This, let's do the same thing. But now, remember, it's a combination between movement and stillness. It's a movement in still life. So when we grasp the sparrow's tail, Grip the ground with your feet when you step forward. The way change happens is the arm reaches its limit. We have war off. And now as I shift back, I do grasp the sparrow's tail. And I'm stepping forward while I'm warding off. All of the movement happens simultaneously. There are actually no breaks. It's just like you're drawing and there's one continuous line. Grasp the sparrow's tail and ward off. Just one line. Like you're drawing calligraphy with your hands. And you want to make them continuous. And what's the purpose of this? I didn't realize I was off camera over there, by the way. What's the purpose of this? It has martial art value, right? It has, for, for, it's continuous, right? If my movements are continuous and things are happening around me, I can be continuously moving and changing to accommodate those, those changes around me. So being able to paint, being able to draw calligraphy uh, very naturally, very smoothly, this... Uh, is somebody calling out the characters and you can change or write as you need, as the energy also dictates. So this is uh, developing a type of coordination. You see, if you look at uh, my teacher and my teacher's teacher, Grandmaster Sue Zafong, if you watch her, she has poise and grace. She's, she's older than we are. And she looks better, than, and, and her movement is more clean and more clear for everything that she does. So this type of learning the Tai Chi form is not just for Kung Fu. There's a benefit for self-defense. You can have some idea how to defend yourself against the world. Gravity, starting. <clears throat> Second is door. You have to open the door, see my posture change. If I do this, and the same, if I'm relaxed, I can support my whole structure with the relaxed shape. So, uh, let's do just a little bit more grasp of Sparrow's Tail and ward off. Anyone have questions, thoughts, comments, ideas? This is very basic. We have, uh, looks like about 20 minutes uh, for the hour, but let's just do one more run of grasp the Sparrow's Tail and ward off. We'll do some closing uh, meditation and that will be our class. So, starting from the center, if you're feet are touching and your hands are at the side, if we just step to the side, the hands open and expand into the, the correct shape, sink the tailbone, breathing, grasp the sparrow's tail, ward off, and then breathing, draw a circle to catch, step forward, 
the Lord off. It doesn't matter if your circles or your shapes are perfect or what it is that you're doing. Just make the continuous movement and go back to the same breathing that we started with. Sink your tailbone. Push your head top up. Grasp. Ward off. Grasp. Ward off. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's actually <clears throat> do a little bit of cheekbone to close. So, turning the waist is important for spine health, uh, for our overall structural health, and also for internal, for organ health. So on this next one, uh, have a nice, I can't see if I'm centered on the screen or not, so uh, make your feet nice and stable, and then make your spine upright and vertical, turn it around the center, so we don't want to tilt as we, ch as we change. We're just turning our head and our waist, and the arms, if I wasn't turning my arms and, and my waist, my arms are literally just going up and down like this on one axis. <clears throat> and then I'm adding the waist turn. So breathing, inhale. This is actually a very simple movement. So see how simple you can make it. Try not to overcomplicate it. Just turning around the center. Allow your spine to sink down to the earth and extend up into the sky. Open your nostrils to breathe more. Check to see if you have the corners of the mouth activated. Lifting the base of the torso and make the breathing match the movement. So if your breathing is super slow, your movement will also be super slow. <clears throat> And every breath is a new life. So, if you have a lifetime filled with long and relaxed breathing, your life will be very long and relaxed. But if you have a lifetime filled with short breathing, tense breathing, your life will be very short and tense. So take the time to go at your own pace. Other people may have different pace different timing than you. <clears throat> and sometimes that timing is too slow. Sometimes that timing is too fast. For your practice, you go to the speed that you like. At some point, change directions. Now on the other side, remember, try not to tilt. Pull your head top up, fill your whole body all the way to the tips of your fingers and beyond with energy. And just relax and exhale, fully inflating. The same way we said there's a Tai Chi principle to inflate yourself before the activity. If you're going out into the garden or you're going to work in the garage, something, going for a drive, inflate yourself. In the same way, after each activity, you can take some time to reflect. And in this case, we can use the time to, if you've spent energy, We've done some Tai Chi, some workouts, so we can use this time to regain anything that we've lost <clears throat> during the practice. So we're making sure that the battery is fully charged when we put everything away. Go at your own pace. Long, relaxed breathing. center, let your hands stop in the center when you're exhaling, 
See how lightweight you can make your arms as if they're floating, like from the same exercise before. Relax your shoulders. <clears throat> and then bring your feet together, bring your hands together in the center. And then the same way you made the connection to the ground earlier with your tailbone. Allow the inside of the hips to relax so that the tailbone can, almost like you're going to sit down on the very edge of a very stable seat, something very solid. Lift your feet, push your head top up, relax your shoulders. Internally, open your sinuses and your nostrils. Half smile is the minimum. Connect the tongue to the upper palate in the same way the softer it is, the more chi can flow through. We're lifting the inside of the pelvic floor on the breathing. And then in a standing meditation, allow your eyes to close somewhere between 1 and 99% from where they are. And move your mind all the way down to the center of the ground between your feet. So imagine that your, your mind's eye is down there. What it would look like? You would see your feet rising on either side of the camera <clears throat> like big mountains. And you, if you looked up, your, your body would be trailing off into the zenith. So take a second breathing. Pull your chi down to the feet. As if you can, by relaxing the tension in your legs and in your lower back, you can allow the energy to collect all the way down there where your feet are. And then move that mind's eye camera all the way up into the center of your belly button. And imagine like a like a bird taking nest inside of a hollow of a tree or a rock. Imagine putting your mind's eye inside of your belly button. And like you have a half shirt and no shirt and you can see out. What would it be like? So breathing deep, put yourself in the center. And imagine the, the outside of your navel would, would either fill the frame or create a type of fisheye if you have a, an Audi belly button. Something. <clears throat> and then the same way, imagine that that is like a, <clears throat> a magnet for the chi. So breathing deep, both pull and pull, P U L L and P O O L. So you're pulling it in and allowing it to collect there the chi to the center. So relax your body so that all of the energy can drain to the center. Here you can take a second to smile at yourself while the energy is returning back to the center and solidifying from the center outwards. Maintain the same long breathing and you can literally turn your eyeballs in their sockets all the way down to your bounty and looking at yourself in the center. Take a deep breath. In yoga, they call it a victory breath. You made it through another week. So looking at yourself, smile at yourself. Take a congratulatory breath. You made it. And allow that <clears throat> to allow you to relax. Next, we're going to move where you think your mind is, up into the center of your heart. And if you put the camera inside there, uh, we've seen animation and, and computer simulations and illustrations, uh, movies, commercials of what that would look like. So imagine with your mind inside of your heart that you can refresh your heart. You can allow it to relax just like you can allow the muscles on the outside to relax. <clears throat> In some texts they say the heart can become very hard. And this kind of follows with... Uh, Western medicine, what happens to a diseased heart becomes hardened. So imagine softening literally your heart. Your mind is right in the center of the heart. Take a second to smile at it. Imagine that you can allow it to unfold and become soft. And taking just the right amount of chi, not, not too much, not too little. Breathing deep, breathe into your heart. And then one more time, move the, where you think your mind and your heart is up to the center of the brain. 
You can think of the third eye spot as well, if you'd like to put it on the outside. Breathing, allow your brain to relax. See if you can relax the skin on the top of your head, the fascia on the inside, the liner of your cranium, the fluid that the brain sits in and the brain itself, all of that relaxed. The chi can go there and refresh channels that are literally on the surface of the brain. Breathing deep, take a second to smile at your brain and give thanks to your brain. It's working for you all the time. Even when it doesn't work that great, whatever's still there, whatever's still working, take a second to smile. Give thanks to your brain. And <clears throat> move your consciousness one more time, just a little bit higher, just outside of the top of your head. Like you're looking down, see yourself from above. See what the little cathedral of your fingers formed with your hands looks like. See how your shoulders come out from underneath the top of your head. See your feet firmly planted from above. And then smile at your whole self from above, breathing deep. Relax your whole body. <clears throat> and then we're going to go one more time. Take your consciousness and move it as far away as you think you can move it away while still seeing yourself. If you can be on another planet and look all the way down to see, or even further away from <clears throat> the solar system into the galaxy, see yourself from as far away as you can. And see your place on the earth. Relax your body, relax your mind, and smile at yourself from so far away. <clears throat> Breathing deep, bring your mind, your consciousness back inside your body. <clears throat> Internally, take one more last deep breath. And that's it. Have a great weekend. Appreciate it.